happy jamhuri day kenya's independence day ah we didn't ask the constitutional lawyer to break it down for us <laughs> he broke he actually did break it down mm-hmm. what happened on 1st of june 1963 december 1963 december 1964 he told us he did yes when we were here together he made a statement <laughs> <laughs> said, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he discovered one statement. What did he say? He said, I am not mentioning a certain <laughs> name because... <laughs> 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 yeah, did, did he not say? Bas. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Our next guest is an author. And he has author. Hey, this book has a beautiful cover. Eh? Now that cover is beautiful. Isn't it? Beautiful. Kabisa, kabisa, kabisa. Yeah? Mm. Luo of Kenya mm-hmm. chronicled profile of clans by Stephen Osieyo Stephen is our guest good morning good morning welcome to the hot seat of the situation room <laughs> yes thank you very much for welcoming me <laughs> <laughs> uh, happy jamhuri day to you it to me just born on the 12th of december 1958 so happy birthday oh, to oh happy Allah. birthday happy <laughs> birthday Abbas. Eba. Sina. Keki ndio hii. Yes, keki amekuja. Keki amekuja. Keki ndio huyu. Ndio huyu. Eh? Yes. He's just a couple of months older. No, me I'm a couple of months older. Mm? Mm. Than him. Mm? When did you first meet Steven? We met in 1976. 1976. Yes. <laughs> Where? Where? How yeah. do you even remember that I met this guy yeah, for the first Do you remember the first time we met Ndu? Oh, I uh, know. Well, I know, look. It was 2001. And... See, now can you imagine? See, now I want to remember the exact day. <laughs> I know the year and I'm trying to imagine you know, you know the, the exact year? same place that it was. So where did you meet Steven <laughs> in 1976? Homa Bay High School. Mm-hmm. Yes. What was happening there? I had gone there to form 5. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he was in that school already. I see. Yes. <laughs> And we were friends. But we, you became very, friends. It's actually odd. Mm. It's odd. You know not to mention it. Mm. He and I are going to be discussing this later. Yeah. How did we become friends? Because we became very good friends. Yeah. Yes. Very good. And he's looking at you like don't, don't, <laughs> no, don't but it is true we, we, we became very 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 good don't, 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 yeah. don't say it. don't say anything more than that yeah <laughs> he's, he's, he's giving you that look like please fifth amendment what just, happens in homa bay high school just just remains, in, remains in, homa in homa bay high school <laughs> just keep it there okay welcome Steven. thank you city has the day's proverb Yes I do from mm-hmm. the uh, Republic of Djibouti. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. It has a population mm-hmm. of 1 million. I thought I would just mention that. Or there about 1 million what? People, 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 okay. people, people. Okay. Human beings, brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> New Zealand has a population of how many million sheep? Tuna fish. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 1 million people. People. That's the population beings. of Djibouti. Yes, they're, they're about. Mm. Okay, it's not like the other country we're mentioning that has a range. The range of you're told there are between three point near and six point. No, no, <laughs> this is one million. Okay, good. The problem. When an, what an adult sees from the ground, a boy cannot see even if he climbs a silk cotton tree. Stephen, how do you interpret that proverb? Um, I would say something to do with experience. Mm-hmm. The the old man has seen much, much worse, and what the boy is seeing, they've already seen before. Mm. I think that's what it means here. Yeah. Where what you are going through, your father went through, and so long before you are born. Mm. So he stays. Don't marry from that clan. Don't marry from that clan. <laughs> 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 yeah. Speaking of which, I mean, there are 45 clans of the Luo. If he tells you don't marry from a Lego clan, just look for the other, any other. You can go to Kabuch, <laughs> Kadem, Kadola, Kagan. You know, you have Kajulu. to come to this one. No? You have to come to Kanyamwa. <laughs> And you have to come to Masombo. You can go to Yimbo. Yeah. Why did you decide to write this book about the clans of the Luo? Yeah, why specifically the clans? I could have written anything about the Luo. Mm-hmm. But um 
what happened is that we've talked about writing with some gentleman here a long time ago and he was giving me tips mm. then life got in the way and uh, <laughs> we didn't do anything mm. but i kept close to culture and things like that and uh the Tony Blair government really promoted uh, multiculturalism and they even raised, put funds aside for heritage. You start an NGO on heritage, they, they fund you for that. Mm. So that time I wanted, thought about setting up a um, sort of um, a network of Luo groups all over East Africa. Mm. But then it died a natural death. <laughs> it died a still a still birth. Mm. But it kept. It was in my mind to write something about the law. Mm. Then uh, one time I got talking to my daughters and I said, you know, you can't marry Origi mm. because he's from my clan. And they said, who knows about these clans? And I said, somebody, <laughs> must, somebody must put it down why they cannot marry whoever they want. Then mm. I say that the first thing is talk about how did this clan start? And when I looked down, I found some writing. And uh, first of all, these writings were way back. Mm. Uh, 54, the most impressive one. Of course, we have a lot of Lua writings in libraries, in yes. museums, by Bazungos, by anybody who wants to. But they don't cover the Lua globally. And I said, let me do something as a blog. And then the blog people said, no, we want this in a textbook. And they kept on demanding. In fact, after the last moment, they were saying, it's Lua history. Don't put it on paperback. We want it hardcover. Mm -hmm. It's going to be expensive, but we don't care. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so, that is, that is, <laughs> so that is how we got. And then when I went looking down, I found that all that area, we went to school, city, Karachuonyo, populous as they are, mm. very educated. Mm. Nobody had ever put in a textbook talking about their clans. You have them in libraries, you have in folklore, and there are so many groups there that are there in folklore that came up with, but nobody has ever put a book that a young boy mm -hmm. in the diaspora can show to his, or a young woman can say, oh, you want to marry me? I'm from Kaji. Kabwoch, for example, mm. and this is our history written here. I don't have to tell you again. Mm. We never had anything like that. And it shocked me that half of the country was like, half of the community was like that. So I said, I'll put in some oral literature from tradition, as though it's not written, and that will be helpful to our community. Mm. Yes. Stephen, I must take you back. After that moment when you spent some years together with City in high school, what did you go on to study and what did you then practice? Yeah. <laughs> Can I talk about him as well? Yes. No, <laughs> no please. Absolutely. It's absolutely necessary. No, these that you people do. uh, don't seek his are permission. dying. In fact, that's what don't want to leave ask you. anything <laughs> See? out. See? Steve, <laughs> he, he was against me taking um, finances and accounting like mm. that, but he accepted it uh, and encouraged me along the way. Mm. He wanted to do military law. I uh, don't know what happened the way. That is what the city wanted to do. I wonder he's that like that. Yes, yeah. I changed my mind. I mm -hmm. decided to become a teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So from there, there was this Jungtad proposal in Africa, like many, like many UN proposals that get promoted and they end up nowhere. There was a promo promotion that Africa should do more with non-university degrees mm -hmm. and go into technical subjects mm. and that is when i took on to accountancy mm. uh, being very obedient to un mm. and then i studied accountancy uh, i started working with the ngo sector i worked with several ngos in kenya mm. then uh, my when my <coughs> when my wife went to the uk and did nursing there, I decided to join, and that was in 1999. Then mm -hmm. I've been working with international NGOs since then. Mm -hmm. In finance, which is very far removed from literature, literature far removed from culture, mm -hmm. but um, um, I've always been involved in a people kind of thing. I spent a year in international um, exchange program in the U.S., and after that is when I met City, and we talked a lot about such things, uh, the politics of culture, and City was very good at that, and that's, yeah.
So that has been my life, finance administrator in mm. uh, in an INGOs. Yes. Mm. I mean, I think every time we find that uh, we as Africans are putting down our culture and our history in books, I think that there is a benefit that is so far-reaching that we maybe do not understand it. That for the longest time, what we read in books is what people who knew nothing about us have put in books then for us to read. So I'm always excited when there's one of us who's putting down history, putting down culture, putting down unknown information, and then can present a piece of information for generations. Um, you talked about your daughter's influence on then putting some of this then down again and saying, look, my daughter can show up and marry somebody that she's essentially related to. So beyond the knowledge of that social construct, what are some of the things that would benefit folks from learning? I mean, I, my goodness, there are very many Kenyans who would just assume that, you know, Luos are Luos, but here we are looking at how many clans are these, like, if I counted them. Um, six minus one. Sorry? 35. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, here we are saying there are 35 different, in their own right, clans of the Lua that we didn't even think, didn't even assume that they were different in nature. Why did you decide to do it that way? Yes. I thought it was the, all the easiest way because uh, despite all these uh, modernity and changes, if you meet a Lua girl and you say, oh, where are you from? She'll say, I'm from Kusakwa. And without knowing the full meaning of Sakwa, that is culture, that clan has stuck to the Luos, despite the fact that she might not speak much Luo, mm. but she'll say, Anya game. And um, then the, 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 the issue was, oh, mm. we have a federal structure here. This, this one I discovered while write, writing that. Mm. Oh, we have a federal structure in Luo. Mm. And uh, despite them being different, they, they, they are connected in some way. They come together on issues. They come together to fight, mm. <laughs> to, to throw stones, mm. but they are different. <laughs> they come together to, for example, to agree with the white man. Okay, we'll go and fight your war that has nothing to do with us. Mm. Okay, well, mm, we'll go to your schools. I mean, take our girls from home and take them to your schools. They agree together. But when it comes to times for fighting, again, they set up the fight. So there was some sort of federal structure here. But this ones I discovered while writing. Mm. And um, I took that and as, then I looked at, okay, who, who built these clans? Mm. I mean, from, from uh, Sudan, we didn't have them. Mm. And sort of they grew when we arrived in Western Kenya. There were not so many. And as they moved to the south, southern part of the lake, the clans increased. Mm. Then the question was, who what makes these clans? And what informed the making of the clans? <laughs> yeah, mm. uh, yeah, and uh, why did it stop? And I think uh, it has come, a question has come, who stopped them being more than that? Mm. And uh, who is in charge of these clans? And now these are the things I was discovering while going down, that uh, some people were in charge of these clans. And it revealed a lot about the Lua as a community, something that even the Luas might not even know themselves, mm. some that came and... Uh, People who are reviewed, young people who are who are reviewing, saying, "Oh, you mean this feminism started in Luo a long time ago?" Mm. Then I said, "I don't know." Then they gave me the points I've written in my book that supports that. Uh, then one said, uh, "The word feminism is European word. Maybe we didn't know it. Mm. It doesn't apply to Africans. We just do the things we should do, and it's not there." They but just appear normal. <laughs> yes, they appear normal. That, mm. that uh, this natural is, things no. that happen. That, yes, that who is in charge of governance? Mm. The women were in charge of governance. Mm. The women, the men did the aggregation of uh, wealth, um, raiding, and once it reaches home, once it's you get managed the land, by the woman. Yeah, and maybe that's why it was managed so well. <laughs> I didn't say that. CT, uh, that is a, no, but I like that was an ad lib. <laughs> Can I change that? No, no, but Steve, it, it is actually it's actually a very good. We had this same discussion the other day. Yesterday. Yes, yesterday, mm. and we we're talking about how it is that the role of women are diminished, and yet it's very central to very many things that we actually do. And the influence is it permeates almost everything, and yet. When you listen to the narrative, especially if it's a male-dominated narrative, it, it diminishes that very, very importance. And yet our communities, as Kenyan communities, we see it replicated over and over and over. And yet we want to say it doesn't exist. So when you say it exists, we are in agreement it exists. <laughs> yes, yeah. And, uh, yes, and the interesting thing, mm -hmm. did you know the smallest unit of a clan 
even mm. your clan, mm. is named after a woman, never the man. That I knew. What do you mean the smallest unit? A, we have so what's the structure of a clan? The structure of a clan is that, okay, you have the Luos, mm -hmm. then you have the clans, then you have the sub-clans, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which are more or less the smaller group after that. Then the smaller, the sub-sub-clan is always the name of a woman, Katieno, Kachieng. The reason, the equation is, or why no were being asked, the, when I was being interrogated, mm -hmm. why the woman? Why is the mother? Mm. Or and some things came up. Why is it that a low woman never changes her name? Mm. Changing of name is a European mm. concept. You, they always say nya sakwa, nya kamagambo, atieno nya, whatever it is. A low woman stays that way after the day she dies. Why is it that? So mm. these are the things they were catching me on and saying, do you really know your culture? And these are young people now interrogating my book. Mm. Yeah, so this I discovered along the way. I don't want to say that I knew them, but mm. I discovered along the way while writing, and it expanded the book as we are going. Something that you said, that um, by the time the Luo were moving from the Sudan region, coming to occupy this western part of Kenya, yes. they did not have these structures. That These structures developed while residing here. Yes. So which was the first clan, and how did it come about? This has to be from Professor Good has to be Jokowin. And from a Jokowin you will have what you call Jokarut. And that is where you have the Ogelo people. Of course everybody knows Obama. Mm -hmm. That should be the first clan to the first group to come. Then there was another group that came in and then a third group that came in. So they came in three uh, tranches. Now how they developed uh, from here into clans is that from a family you don't marry your sister mm. you know and then if your sister marries from across the clans and you marry somebody from across the clan and it must have been biological life experiencing situation where um, especially in an area, an area where there's malaria and sickle cell that you marry the closest and your children die, mm. so uh -uh, stay away, then okay. children will leave. Mm. They might call it Chira, but they all, uh, the scientifically, we can, pro we can prove that it's not Chira, it's... It's biology. Uh, yeah, it's biology. That And it, that must have been something experienced that, oh, he married the closest cousin and they don't have children. Mm. Why? So marry away. That must have been the reason. So the clans developed that way. That is my assumption, how it developed. And they said, you marry away as much as possible you keep distance and then the clans develop from there yes. so if if we're saying that the first group was what do you call them Jokowin, Koke, yeah the, 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 the Jokowin. yes so was that a clan it wasn't it wasn't a clan it mm. was a group of uh, a troop that came across to Kenya mm -hmm. and usually in such a group you are accompanied by so many people the, the dominant person bears the name mm -hmm. Practically, yeah, the dominant person bears the name. Yeah, but uh, it was a group of people that came under the banner of Joko Wing, who was a warrior. Mm -hmm. But there must have been several, hang, not hangers on, mm -hmm. people who accompanied mm -hmm. and became part of the clan. Another one is uh, Lego, mm -hmm. closely associated with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lego had a very clever person who believed in uh, safety numbers. So what he did was every newcomer, whether you are a Luo or not. He'll swear you into allegiance, we'll work together. <laughs> and the clan developed from that. So mm -hmm. you find that in Alego, he had even um, brother in law swearing allegiance, and they form sub clan from that. Mm -hmm. uh, Yukau Gag, for example. And what was that was a brother in law, and they made them Alego. So Alego became, it was a safety numbers. A bigger number, you survive. And uh, that is how a Lego developed. Some developed direct from family, but not all that they were children of the same bloodlines that coming together is. Yeah. How do they start multiplying? Uh, from the bedroom? No. <laughs> 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 well, there's that. Mm. Yeah, that, that, is a, that, that is a good question. Mm. We have to go back to Lake Albert, about 1500. What people use to do by then, and I think this happened with many tribes, even as far as West Africa, and many groups that you try to conquer a group and you make them 
your subjects. They mm. become part of you. Mm. Now with the law, what they did uh, is that they would, um, when the movement started, is that in their raids, they would raid for wealth, they would raid just to keep the enemies off. Mm. But in the captives, the laws had a very interesting one, is that instead of enslaving, even though you are a slave, you become a clan and they allow you to intermarry as long as you form an allegiance. What that had is that there was expulsion, <laughs> expansion in numbers. Mm. And that is what made the Luos that came towards Kenya expand so rapidly. And uh, because their, their style was to expand, their, 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 their main mission was to expand their numbers. And with their numbers, they be just the number became very huge within a very short period. And even when they decided to settle down, they resorted to... Uh, I discovered what's a better word. Uh, they, they decided to cast them and habits that will make them procreate more. And you'll find that uh, city will not like this one. In most of the Lua rituals, mm. it was always punctuated by... Uh, younger Luas criticize it, but it was always... Uh, Punctuated by some sexual activity. Okay, you said it. I didn't say it, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yes. So in so, some rich, in every ritual, planting, harvest, would it be public? Sorry, would it be public? Yeah. It was a custom that was accepted and was known. Sorry, I'm very confused. So okay, but is it been practiced like so? We have planted. It's the end of the day to Mekula to Meshiba, and then now all of you guys go to the field and. No, no, it will no, be. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to explain and, and it. That, yeah. that if, uh, you know, like, um, if uh, a ritual or an installment is not punctuated by you being friendly to your wife or being having a happy, harmonious home, mm. then it means the home is cursed. Right. But if you look at it, this was just to encourage procreation. procreation. And because they were not now not moving and conquering new clans when mm. they settled around the lake, they again they expanded. Mm. And this strategies made the Luos expand, the Luo group, sorry, expand very fast. And as noted by Professor Goat as well, that that is one of the things that made them expand so fast. And that expansion led to either shunting of some communities mm. or a, a martial group. Mm. And they, they, or fighting did not come as, you know, they didn't have to think twice before start a fight. I think <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so military leader would engage if that is, and that way they expanded. There were people that were found in that land and they expanded very fast and occupied that center of the, part of the lake, which was good for them because apart from the food, one side of the lake was a boundary, a natural boundary of water. Mm. So you only had to focus on one side of the lake, yes. Mm. yes. So even as you look at all these, the progression yes. from history, then yeah. looking into today, how do you see, and even as you put this down, how do you see that that historic, um, uh, whether it's behavior or practice, has affected happenings today? Yes, that's a very interesting question. And I'm glad you mentioned it so that I don't have to look for it. <laughs> yeah, because... Um, one thing that has been noticed within the Luo, whether in the diaspora or in Kenya, is that the Luo women are very stable in the cultural norms. And two, that stability gives them the strength to start like self-help groups. Mm -hmm. And they are very successful. And um, whether you are in Kenya or in the UK, whenever you move, the first person's credit card to be blacklisted is always a man never the women you never find women with blacklisted seat mm. <laughs> like that means that there's some stability and that uh, acknowledgement of the women's role mm. will help in the the the, the, the Luo man acknowledging the, that we can't have separate governance we, we 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 have to work together that doesn't mean you are less of a man mm. so that is helpful in that way some of the emerging issues that came are even issues to do with the clans now that we cannot can somebody tell us who else we can marry because the, the generations have gone down and some of these emerging issues uh, like you've mentioned need to come out in the fourth mm. in the fall so that they are discussed and resolved so that we don't stick to 
to um, customs that are not good for us. Like CT, remember the, the election, one of the election exams they used to use for to bar black people from voting? Mm. Things like, um, draw a straight line around this sentence. I know there are such, how did you draw a straight line around, around. a sentence? Mm. But it was used to bar, to bar black people from voting. Mm. Now, we might have customs that are like that. Like mm. we have many women, or many little ladies, probably in the 60s now, mm was never married but she had children mm. and uh, for the children to marry the customs say oh your dowry must have been paid there must be a point where you say okay no even though her dowry was not paid she can move on with her life the young people can move on with their lives mm. so your question is very relevant that we, we need to look at all this the mm. emerging issues mm. and um, resolve them another one is uh, which is a myth very wrong myth mm. that a little woman had to be married that's not true <clears throat> We have clans, mm. little clans, maybe major ones, who are ladies who either married an outsider and stuck to the clan, or never married but had children, or married but refused to go. The man must live with them in their community. Mm. So it's not, uh, th those are mid tell us those clans. <laughs> <laughs> not that one. You don't have to keep away from them. <laughs> you, don't, you have to mention those so, so this, these are some of the myths we have to get rid of. Thank you. You're telling us about, you know, the dynamism of the various clans. There would be clans where, for example, like you said, women would retain their homes. You get married, but the man is the one who comes here. They would retain their names, not clans. There are clans where women do not have to get married. They'd have children and they wouldn't get excommunicated. What informed all this? Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, these are uh, these, uh, the arrangements talking about is, uh, it's not uniform per clan, mm. but uh, what I was acknowledging is that you have incidences where a woman never got married, but their clan arose from that clan. For example, a sub-clan arose from that. Mm. And uh, the sub-clan, uh, for example, uh, in uh, uh, without name, Oriya Rogos clan mm -hmm. and uh, Kama Rogos clan, mm. they arose because a, a, a girl from a game clan. What's that? What's that clan called? Can you bop? Yeah, can you bop? A girl from a game clan mm. married a Kalenjin, mm. and I think she didn't fancy going to Kalenjin land, mm. and she stayed in game and became Can you bop sub clan within game. That is so the Kalenjin man moves, moves and lives in game now. Mm -hmm. So the, the the point I was driving across is that some of the these happenings is that the, 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 the community was very dynamic, that they would see a problem and come up with a solution. They were not just rigid structures that were never moved despite the condition. And there were several clans that we call it Jokanyako, mm. which you can trace. I'll pick on, um, or without naming the clans, mm. but there are these clans that would, were, they came out of a condition that the community acknowledged that it does exist. Uh, one of them was a lady who was blind, and knowing that she's blind, she cannot be married elsewhere at home. Marital value goes down. Mm. So it's, she married within her clan and her children became a descendants of Jokanyako. So this is a community that in mm. my opinion, I'm not without being um, uh, overpraised over romantics that the, 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 the customs that we had were not rigid customs as they are painted. They are not so primitive as they can be painted by calling them tribes that they were very uh, well-organized systems of operation that exist and i'm sure in many african tribes this exists there are conditions for organizing the way they live you know the what is of interest <laughs> is what it is or how it is you brought in a very interesting anthropologic anthropological perspective here that is Looking at how groups of people, you said, govern themselves, yes, the norms by which they feel they should conduct their lives, and then there's a reason why it is that they feel it is so. Uh, 
listening to what Stephen is saying, it's a society that had learned to accommodate its diversity. Mm. Instead of ostracizing it, you accommodate it. Mm. This is not what other people are doing, but someone is doing it, you accommodate it. Mm. And you accommodate to the point of even giving it a name and a title so that it is recognized. Mm. So historically, you can actually tell someone's origin or someone's background by simply telling you exactly where someone tells you where they come from mm. they've actually told you their history just by mentioning that one i come from this the history then becomes ah mm. this is the clan of the people who did this and this and this but i have to ask what happened to communities where people are known to be night runners mm. <laughs> oh, this is interesting i have from where i gathered this night running was in my putting on the little science I know, mm -hmm. is in my opinion, these people are just sleepwalkers, you know? <laughs> but then the thing is, is that why did the community tolerate them? Mm -hmm. The community tolerated them and uh, say you have a place where you have a lot of cattle mm -hmm. and somehow cattle is, uh, is disappearing mm -hmm. or there is a suspected incest in the community. Or um, there's infidelity in the community. Mm -hmm. Who do you think will tell you? Who do you think the old men will go to? A guy who's up at night. Yes. They'll <laughs> go to the night runner. And they'll not tell them, we know you're a night runner. Mm -hmm. They'll ask, ah, CT, this case of this, this young girl is pregnant. I wonder what's happening. And Muse CT would say, uh, have you checked with the Ching or Ete? <laughs> you, know, and, you know, and without asking where were you or what did you see, <laughs> that was the intelligence. Or where a cattle is disappearing, mm -hmm. the old men would go to these guys. So as much as they appear evil and all that, what I gathered is that they were they were value. They were they were value, and there were many in areas where they were keeping cattle against cattle raiders. I get the cat, cattle rustlers, mm. especially when you think of the Homer Bay terrain, the cattle rustlers who believed all, car, all cows in the world belong to them. Mm -hmm. You know them, I'm not naming names. Mm -hmm. They would come for them. And the cattle rustling uh, was there up to 70s. Mm. And who would protect the community against the cattle rustlers? The night watchers. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it that it's only the cattle rustling areas where you have more night runners? I had never thought of it that way, actually. I never thought of it. So these people are not sleepwalking. Which may be advanced sleepwalking, but they are not they're sleepwalking, conscious. in my opinion. Yeah, they're, they're, they're conscious. They're aware of yes. what's happening. Yes. And it's not a condition, is it? It's not a condition because they are able to control it, in my opinion. They are able to control it. Yeah. But also it is said that it's mm. hereditary as well. Okay. Yeah. That it's very, very unlikely that you would have, uh, you would be that way inclined if someone in your lineage was not inclined. Mm. You see, now the issues of marriage then would come in. Mm. Okay? Do you, you want your child, your sibling, your relatives to marry? To be like you. To marry, no, to marry into that. Mm. But that they married and that they also had families means people did marry. Mm. Yeah. And that, in my mind, is what speaks or bespeaks of the tolerance. It was understood, but yeah. It is what it is. It, it was what it was, and it was accepted that it was what it was. And but incidentally, they don't kill people. No, no, no. They were not known to kill people. Not at all. So why are they shunned? They, because Just because of the oddity of being up at night? Uh, they're I a nuisance. So, a nuisance, yes. They're a nuisance. They, they were not known. They, they were just known to be mischievous. Yeah. And if you had made the mistake of having a corrugated iron roof, mm -hmm. then... They sort of like they take, sort of like say, and rattle your roof with it at night and wake you. <laughs> it's not fun. You wouldn't be laughing if you are young, you know. You know that. <laughs> As a young person, you know something to laugh about. But now we can laugh. Yeah. Did the clans stop forming at some point? At the book lodge, that's very interesting. Maybe you're at the book lodge. At the book launch, they ask those questions. They mm. ask these are emerging issues that we must resolve. Why did they stop? And if they stopped, why can they be allowed to remarry at a certain stage? Why don't we have new laws? And uh, it was agreed that this needs 
it's beyond this book mm. and it needs a um, sort of a national symposium to find out. I'll tell you like the Karachonyo people are so many mm. and they don't know marry. And it's followed religiously that in Nani you Tomari, cannot yeah. marry with Karachonyo will not marry Karachonyo even at gunpoint. Well, I don't I haven't tested that, <laughs> but <laughs> yes, yeah. But they will not, and they follow it religiously, whether they're in Nairobi or where. So, the, but they have all these other many 40 plus clans to marry. For. Well, I did a chat on mm. marriage clans, it's in the book, you can access it by the QR code here, mm -hmm. and um. I remember uh, my f sister's, uh, my, uh, my daughter's friend who was there looked at them and said, but there's a lot of this green, why do we stick, why why pay attention to the red where we cannot marry? Mm. All this green we can marry, what's wrong, what's the problem here? So you are, your question is right that, but there are all these other clans you can marry. Why are we sticking to your clan you are told not to marry? So, so uh, if you're a member of one clan, let's pick one clan the Kanyada clan. Yes, all right? Yes. Just as an example. Yes. You cannot marry within the Kanyada clan. Are there other clans that the Kanyada clan should not marry from? That's a very good question and you picked the most difficult clan to handle. <laughs> so as a general rule, mm. Kanyada should not marry within Kanyada. One. Two. Okay. And but Kanyada, because they are who they are, they have certain rules that develop that they are allowed to intermarry within certain, let's say, you have Kanyada, A sub, sub clan, Kanyada, B sub sub clan, mm. they have a permutation where C can marry with D. Mm -hmm. and so have, within the sub clan. Within the sub clan. And you have that also in a clan like Kamageta, which if you are uh, your maternal, your maternal relationship, that you say within clan D of another group, say game, mm. you are not allowed to marry as Lewis. But with them, they say, ah, yes, we can. What informs this? Uh, uh, that's a good question, mm -hmm. and that is probably mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. the symposium they are saying. There must have been reasons for this, but are those reasons still subsisting? One of it was bloodlines. Mm. If you could trace a bloodline. And that is someone you could actually not marry. Because remember, in traditional African society, we didn't have cousins. We had brothers and sisters. Mm. And when someone was your brother or your sister, there was a bloodline that connected you. Now, where there was none, even if there were relations, mm. like, say, my cousin's wife's sister, mm. that is somebody we, we can marry. That's, or, that's removed. Yes. Mm. Or even my wife's sister, mm. we could marry. Because I'm actually not related to her. Mm. Yes. Now, that is what they looked at. While in other clan, in other groups in Kenya, yes. you cannot marry your wife's sister. They say, how can you do that? Yes. But you see, with the law, scientifically, there's no blood relationship. Mm. What's the problem here? Mm. <laughs> 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 I'm not encouraging you. So the whole issue here is there are clans, and then those clans have cousins. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. And so we are saying that within this clan, if these are your cousin clans, then yes. don't go there. Go beyond yes. that circle. Yes. yes. And, and expand. So one has to know. But then, are these clans geographically placed? So you know, if I'm in this region, this is my clan, and my cousins are across the ridge and the other ridge, so I have to go two ridges away. That is probably going to be my biggest problem in this book. Mm. Because I've revealed what I should not reveal. <laughs> mm. They are not geographically placed. Mm. For example, the one that is going to kill me mm. <laughs> is uh, Tom Boyer. Mm -hmm. Tom Boyer was born somewhere here, around here, but he comes from Kile Rusinga. Kile yes, in, yes. In but he, yeah, but he mm. comes from. Rusinga is where his parents were. Mm -hmm. Rusinga is a Baganda word meaning Ireland. Mm -hmm. So there's no Luo clan called Rusinga. But his father were immigrants from a Sebo clan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they went and lived there. So um, superficially you can say he's a Sebo. Yeah. But when you come to a Sebo clan and you try to say a Sebo Kanyigoro, a Sebo is not one. No. Kanyigoro is not one of the sons of Asembo. 
So where are they from? Zzz, a Lego. Mm -hmm. So in the way I'm doing clans, I'm not talking geography, I'm not talking politics. Mm. The way I'm doing clans, I place Tomboya in a Lego. Mm. Now, that is going to be a problem. But we have to have a rule. We have to follow. Either we are going by clans or we are going geographically. If we are going by clans, I am right in doing then that. It's a Lego. But if we are going to go by geography, then even Barack Obama is not from a Lego. He is from Chicago. Is it Chicago or Iowa or whatever it is? <laughs> uh, but it makes perfect sense because if, 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 if you look at even the area that I come from, which we call Kano as mm. such, literally every clan that is in Kano, with the exception of, I think, three, were immigrants. Yes. Mm -hmm. The clan I come from were immigrants. We moved came, to Kano. Yes, we came from South Nyanza. From where? South Nyanza. The Kindu Bay area. Okay. Of. So, you... But then, is there a clan with a similar name? Yes. In yes. South Nyanza? Yes, Katolo. Yes. You'll so, find Katolo, it. you'll find Katolo. You will find it, In yes. South Nyanza. Yes, and you'll, you'll find, find the Katolo in, in Kano. In you'll, Kano. You'll find it, yes. So, you'll basically say, we are Katolo. Essentially, you can connect. If you, if you, if you, if you wish to look for it, you can. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason why tradition you would find, for instance, or someone who is inclined towards tradition would always inquire when someone wants to get married, where does the girl come from? Yes. Where does the young man come from? Who are the parents? Mm -hmm. It's not this, what do they do? No, no, where do they come, where do from? They come from? Because you would know an aunt of yours married there. Mm. Or an uncle of yours had a wife, whatever the case was. And you would connect. Part of the reason why you found there were so many visits when people wanted to marry. Is to establish this. To establish these things, among <laughs> other things. So that as you bring in, because you never went alone, mm. it was very easy when a, a congregation of people came for you to say, but is not so and so. Mm. But so and so is that. It was part of the reason why these processes were as lengthy as they were. Mm. Yes. To establish this. Just to establish. To ensure and to guarantee to avoid intermarriage yes, yes. exactly yes because of the biology yes. yes mostly it's because you know if you intermarry at this point you're basically just killing the yes. lineage you are in fact what was interesting you would find mm. children born out of wedlock were welcomed in many of our communities and it was specifically for that because it was believed that people give it supernatural qualities but mm. it was this person was is unlikely to have those biological problems that we have or the traits that could follow us. Okay. But even more interestingly, within the community, it was allowed. Like you, Eric, I could invite you to a home and give you land. Literally, give you land. And that could be your home. Now, you would form a sub-clan. Right. And when you formed a sub-clan, that's when you, you would be told, no, no, Eric's clan you can marry from. That's like a pure clan. You can marry from that one. Mm. Because there is no blood relation. Mm. Now, if you asked, is when you'd be told, actually, this fellow is this is how he came to be here mm -hmm. yes so then coming to the modern day and that's the whole mm -hmm. idea where this thing was birthed coming to modern day and looking back into those reasons why you know you have to think about this clan and the other clan and that clan do you think that dna has been broken that now it, you don't have to really dig deep into i mean you meet a girl you like the girl just marry the girl <laughs> clan what <laughs> do you think it's important for us to con to consider um, you, you know, um, matters of faith are very powerful. Mm. When these customs come in, mm. they become matters of faith. So even if a woman said, I don't care, I'm a Lego Kagelo, I live in Chicago, I can marry so and so from London. Mm. <laughs> but deep inside, there's the issue of faith. What does her faith say? Mm. And it's that faith that is so difficult and our thousand year faith of Luo's, you will not get rid of it just like that. Still a Luo woman would introduce the Anya Sakwa and she has all the pride of Anya Kano and she has all the pride of Kano. Mm. Now it will be difficult for her to say Anya Kano and Anya Chicago at the same time. Let's say pick one. I mean, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and they would always pick on Kano. They mm. fall on Kano. Not not because Trump says goes to go back to Africa, no. Mm. But naturally they would pick on that. Yes, they feel so, that's their identity. Yes. Mm. So it, it's um it's it's uh your question is right that does it really matter now? 
But in the mind of the Lua girl, uh, can I say it in Lua? It had no idea. You married your brother. Who are you? You couldn't even find a man. Mm. You had to marry your brother. You know? Mm. And to a, Lua, to a Lua man as well, when they're having a pub, probably when he goes to the toilet, it's useless. He married a sister. <laughs> you know? <laughs> the biology is thrown off. Yeah. It's not there anymore. Yeah. At that instant, the biology is not there. The DNA, the sciences have been thrown away. So it's a matter of faith now that is now controlling things. And Stephen, how does all this play into the politics that lures our stone-throwing nature mm. and everything violent that is associated with our people? How does it play? That it's in the book somewhere. That is probably part three of the book. Yes. Mm. When I, I looked at... Uh, we have this class, and from what we have seen, even the Kikuis were a nation, and mm. the issue of nation. I've borrowed Tom Boyer's word, The Challenge of Nation. Mm. And then I borrowed also Tom Boyer's book of um, Independence and After. So after independence, what happened to the Luo clan and the Luo federal structure the way it is? And I've looked at the challenges that they met. And my reasoning is that in dealing with tribalism, and tribalism affected the growth in Africa so much. That is why Southeast Asia is doing so well. They don't have as many tribes. But Africa has that problem of mm. tribalism. And, and every African government met it. Kenya, like any African country, met it. But Nyerere approached it a different way. Mobutu approached it a different way. Uh, Uganda approached it a different way. Mm. Kenyatta approached it a different way. What he knows best, or the people around him. And I'm sorry to say, in trying to deal with it, Kenyatta approached the cultural attack. And that is the worst attack you can ever have. Mm. Because it's almost spiritual attack. He should have approached it another way. So what happened in the aftermath of uh, when the issues came with the confrontation with the Mboya and the Odinga, and then there was this old thing. No, that's cultural. Mm. Old thing, condemning and calling you know, and circumcise. It's the only nation that talks about that to judge people. Mm. That was a cultural attack. And what happens in a cultural attack? If you approach it that way, you lose. Culture is very powerful. Mm. All over the world, we know that. I'm not saying that. Culture is very powerful. Mm. And when that happened, siege mentality came in. And I've broken it into year after year. <clears throat> excuse me, mm. the sort of um, attacks that were there and the, the choir was picked up. You had shows like, oh, sorry, I'm not attacking the mass media, mm. Vitimbi. Mm. Vitimbi was a cultural attack on the law. We laughed. While the rest of the world were burning shows that uh, profiled certain communities, Vitimbi, mm. in prime time, before football, when everybody's watching, was being used to profile a Luo as a Juan Atari, mm. a dim-witted, dyslexic, somebody who is so scared, jumps on the table when he sees a cockroach, he cannot wear the shoes. That was the image of the Luo. The, and that was a cultural attack. And it continued for years. Mm. Now, when you do that to a community, culturally, they go into a siege mentality. And what happens in a siege mentality? The next point is? Push back. Push back. Mm. And when they push back, they push back in everything they know better. Violence. Mm. And it made them stronger. And I'm not saying people should do that, mm. but it um it came in a situation where we are on our own. Mm. Yeah. We've got to gang together. That's what a segment to fight is. together. Yes. We're under attack. Mm. Steven, thank you very much. Thank you for telling us about this book. Thank you for appearing today. Lou of Kenya, Chronicle Profile of Clans. Where can one buy it? It's available in Nuria now. Mm. And I'm trying to explore other bookshops that can do it. Yes. Safsana. <laughs> Look for it. It's a good book. Thank you for tuning in to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. This is The Situation Room. The only way to start your day.